resource, flooded our environment, and only recently have we been shocked into an awareness of our errors. As long as Americans could escape the soot and clutter of our cities, the voices of those who were trapped, and the warnings of those who understood were never really heard. Pollution was isolated by the very size and the openness of America. A river here, a forest there, a few industrialized cities. These early examples of environmental destruction seemed a small price to pay for prosperity. Everybody's got to come together. There's no certain age where it says you've got, uh, well, no, 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 what he said is, now, well, what are you going to do? It's not you, and it's not you. It's us, man. Not just because you're over a certain age or I'm under a certain age. That don't make you better than me. That don't make you better than me. In other words, don't say, what are you going to do? It's what are we all, as in general, going to do. Don't say this you, me, I, it, this, that. I think it's a worldwide dilemma already. <laughs> right. About the DDT, for instance, that they even know enough now to know it's got to be banned. They give us a two-year leeway to be sure it does its worst. But their, one of their dilemmas is that the Orient will think that we've taken it away from them to be mean because we sold it to them as a way to get rid of insects and have better crops. So we'll never, they'll never believe us that we're taken away because we discovered we'd made a god-awful mistake. Nobody believes the truth anymore. They just believe the propaganda. consumption is where I live up in New York State there was a giant hemlock forest in the early 19th century New York City sucked up all those trees to make charcoal for heating New York and the bark was used for tanning as a result there's nothing but fifth growth little shrub trees now and some pines and a few old maples and oaks but the giant hemlocks have disappeared all that to feed the city the comfort, the creature comfort of the city, that is, you know, charcoal for burning wood and uh, charcoal for heating. The most destructive aspect of our present vision is the inability to see such circuits operating throughout the natural world. Circuits linking DNA with the cell, the cell with the body, the body with the social system, the social system with the ecosphere. Each individual organism kept alive or kept moving by the circuits extending outside it receiving information from the surrounding context. And yet we continue to act as though survival were a matter of the plant or person in isolation, his particular nation, species or family, never realizing that the boundaries we create and defend to protect individual interests instead cut their lifelines to survival. <laughs> 